Question two. So describe the correlation. Look, it's a negative correlation. It's going that way. So there we go. It's a negative. Right. OK, so we need on part B, we do need a bit of knowledge of, of the data set. Um, it's difficult to get these two marks without a bit of knowledge. So suggest which variable could the y-axis be. Now, this we're told here is our daily mean temperature. So it's like it's quite hot and this one's getting quite small. Now, I think the most likely one there is is rainfall. It's probably the easiest one to kind of think about because rainfall is measured in millimetres. Right? And again, you, you need a bit of knowledge really to kind of know what variables there are. The other one that you could have given um, you could have maybe pressure um, as that's going to be can be lower when it's when it's warmer um, but I think this is probably the, the the easiest one to work with and again you know when it's really hot you've got some down there that are zero so I think it's likely to be that one okay so looking at part C now part C let's have a little look to see what we're told right we've got to carry out some correlation test it well look no we're told what the figure is we've got n is 30 and we're given a correlation value um, we've got staff believes that there is a correlation between these two variables. Um, so we've calcul calculated the product moment correlation coefficient, and we need to carry out a simple test to investigate his belief. So let's write down what we're actually told. Now, this question is really quite nice because it's given us some guidance there to, to follow. So, null hypothesis is when the correlation is, is going to be zero. So we just say rho is equal to zero. And then the alternative on this question is that we, we're just investigating. He doesn't say like a positive or a negative. He just says that I think there's a correlation. So in other words, that's not equal to zero. So that makes it a two-tailed two -tailed test. We're looking at a 5% level. Um, we're told that n is 30, so it was a good idea just to try and summarise all these sort of key bits of information here. And we're obviously, we're given that, that correlation value. So what we need to do is now you need to go and look at the table of values. Okay, so I've got, got a big table just here. Now the column that we're going to look at is not 5%. It's actually this one because it's a two-tailed test, right? So we're so we're looking at effectively two and a half percent. Imagine that five percent being split between the two. And then we just go down to 30. So the value that we're looking at is this one here. This is our critical value, all right? So I just read that off. So that's 0 0.36, uh, 0 0.361, okay? That's our critical value. Now we need to comment on that. Now we've got a negative one, haven't we? So if it was a positive, I'd be comment, uh, commenting on it being more than this. So I need to be able to just say, well, this was our, our value was, and that's less than the, the negative version of this. So minus 0 0.361. So what does that actually mean? Well, I'm going to squeeze mine down here. It actually that supports the claim. And... I'd probably write a little bit more detail in there and actually put it into, into context. So there is a correlation between sunshine and humidity. You basically just need to say what you're told here. All right. So, yes, there is. Um, and then the last part of the question, it says on a random day at Heathrow, the daily maximum relative humidity was 97%. Comment on the number of hours of sunshine that you'd expect to happen. So in here... What we'd expect to happen is because it's a it's because it's a negative uh, correlation. It's going to be a lower than average value, right? Because humidity, because that is that's obviously high. So we've got a negative correlation. So therefore, we should be getting lower than average sunshine.